Studio 33 AD Catholic Media Because if you guys want to uh, want to study what is the latest teaching of the church on those matters, on the Holy Bible, one of the four, well, there's only three, there's four constitutions, which are the most important documents of the Second Vatican Council. Amongst these four, three are called dogmatic. It's dogmatic constitutions. One is on the liturgy, uh, Sacrosanctum Concilium, one is on the Church, Lumen Gentium, and I say this is uh, outside of Lumen Gentium, this is the most important document uh, mm -hmm. for the life in the Church today. It's Dei Verbum, or on uh, Dei Verbum, the Word of God, Word literally. Of God. <laughs> uh, so it's it's about the Bible. It's the dogmatic teaching of the Church, and if you've never read read it, I highly recommend it. This we have to study this. You know what? What does the church say to us today, Catholics in the twenty first century about the Bible? Mm -hmm. Because this is the latest teaching of the church, dogmatic constitution. Can maybe we you see want that saying. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe you want to read it, John. Yeah. For Holy Mother Church, relying on the faith of apostolic age, accepts as sacred and canonical the books of the Old and the New Testaments, whole and entire, with all their parts key point, with all their parts, on the grounds that, written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, they have God as their author, and have been handed on, as such, to the Church itself. This is, you know, this is what we believe as Catholics. There is no, we have to believe that this is divinely, uh, the scriptures are given to us by God, and the Church teaches, has always taught, from the beginning, that they are written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and with all their parts, whole and entire, all the New Testament, and they have been handed on to us and to the church herself. So they are holy. The, the, the Bible is the source of our faith. Uh, of course, we can have another class on the Bible and tradition with capital T, how these two go together. This document teaches on a beautiful chapter on the relationship between the Bible and the tradition. Because guess what? We, some Catholics today, unfortunately, kind of get into the dead end when they say that, you know, we are the people of the book. You know, that we are the people of the book. Yes. It's only partially true. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah. You hear this. You hear And this. that's the Protestant influence. Yes, that's the Protestant influence. But, uh, because for Christ did not leave us a Bible. Exactly. As we just noted, Paul is the first one to write. And that's decades later. Right. Right. So, he left us a church. Exactly. First. You just hit it the, the nail on the head. Because uh, the Catholic Church, we are the people of the Word of God. The capital W, right? The Word of God that has been divinely... And that who is the Word of God? is Jesus Christ, right? He came from heaven to teach us. Now, the document in another place will say profoundly that some of the things that Jesus taught have been written down in the divinely inspired text. Not everything. In, do you remember the ending of John's Gospel? When John says, at the very end of the Gospel, he says, if I were, were to put on, when, if I were to write down everything that Jesus said and did, the Understood. entire world would, would not contain the books that would have to be written. So Jesus... <laughs> established oh, we have that acknowledgement. Yes, there was more. Jesus establishes the church, a community of faith guided by the Holy Spirit. And the New Testament is born from within that community of, of the church. Mm -hmm. It's So, so Protestant uh, influence, you know, sola scriptura, scripture alone, which is it, not in the Bible. Yeah, which is, by the way, exactly. It's nowhere in the Bible to be found, yeah. right? In the same way with the word Trinity. You will not find the word Trinity in the Bible. Wow. And yet that's the... That's the we, have of to, our faith. we have to yeah. go there because of what's in the Bible. I will send my spirit. 
I am the yeah. sun. So it's all revealed. Yeah, it's but, there. We have to put the pieces together. But we are not people of the book because we are the people of the word of God. And the word of God is studied, reflected on in the community of the church. So you have the, the Holy Scripture, the sacred tradition, and the magisterium of the church that, that has the power from Christ to interpret the revelation that, that was given to us by God. Because You went for uh, three there. Uh, script. Because yes, oftentimes uh, we'll uh, hear it's a uh, scripture and it'll be kind of lumped together a uh, tradition. Tradition, yeah. The, but tradition, you further clarify, is the combination of the magisterium. Because the magisterium of the church, right? The, the teaching the pope, authority. The teaching authority, the pope and the bishops, mm -hmm. they were given, the, the pope, given the power of the keys, right? The apostles, bishops, their successors. And this is so beautiful for us Catholics because we can rely on that, that the... Um, the revelation that has been given to us as a treasure from God will, will never be, um, uh, that we can rely on that, that it will not be manipulated, you know, that we will not get us well, straight. Paul was writing you know, to Timothy. Yeah, that you can rely on trust that, in you this. know, you can trust mm -hmm. in this. Because, I, I mean, if you get two people, right, and you give them the Bible and say, hey, read the Bible and tell me what you think. I mean, you, you can read oh, it. Okay. You can get different ideas from the Bible. Right? It's not an easy book to read. And that's why we have... Because it's... Even though we might be on a three-year rotation, three years down the road, you might be in a different place. Right. And you'll, well, metaphorically, hear it differently. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But and that's why, yeah, we need some guidance. But the profound thing that Vatican II did uh, in the document and how uh, the treasures of the sacred scripture have been opened for us you know, we are now encouraged to read the Bible. I always say to Catholics, you you now have the Bible in your house, the Catholic Bible, with all the books, and read it with your family. Study it on your own. Yes, because the Protestant yeah. Bible uh, removes seven books yeah, from seven the Old books, Testament. Yeah, are not in the, in the Bible. Those mm -hmm. who are written in Greek. Uh, it's more complicated. Maybe someday we can talk we'll about do a side, that. Yeah. We'll do a side segment on uh, that. Yeah, but uh, the, we have now... What a blessed time, John, to live in today as Catholic. We have access today. You know, if you lived 400 years ago or 300 years ago. Oh, most people, nothing. You, yeah, you could not even, you would not have enough money to buy the book. The only... The now, on, now you can get a free app Yeah, with the whole Bible. The only time you would hear the Bible would be in the church. Mm -hmm. And what else? Paintings on the walls. These were the, we call them the Bible for the illiterate. For people who could not read, the Bible was stained glass windows, yeah. paintings. I refer to the one as the PowerPoints of the, the day. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Here we know. go. Next slide. PowerPoints <laughs> of the day. And they, people would come to church. and they In would, our cathedral. I mean, it's, it's that story. And yeah. they would look, they would look on, on the paintings and they would, now St. Francis of Assisi, right? You know, he, his great idea, how do I teach about incarnation? Well, I'm going to make a living living yeah. crash, you know. So he had the idea. I'm gonna, yeah, that's why. The first nativity scene. First nat nativity scene. Mm -hmm. He inv invented it for people, and we have it until today. We come to Mass on Christmas, and we in your homes, you put the nativity mm -hmm. scene, because that was the Bible for, for the illiterate. But we are so blessed because today, I mean myself, right, we have... A lot of you, I know a lot of people who do the Bible in a year with Father Mike Schmitz. You can get it for free. Yeah, it was uh, like podcast. the number one uh, podcast. Number one podcast. Yeah. You have, we have Bible studies at the cathedral. I've done um, Monday evenings and Tuesday afternoons. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. You can do on your own. You can study the Bible on your own with a lot of helps. Ascension Press is fabulous. Yes. You know. Brad Petrie, uh, we should point out, these are not your dad's Bible studies. Yeah. Now, I mean, it's uh, there's great narration with these videos. Very so engaging. it's not the blind leading the blind. No. Uh, there is guidance that's provided. And, and we need that guidance. I need that guidance. Because very often when I read the Bible, I mean, I go to the commentaries. You know, I sometimes I don't understand certain things. You know, I want to uh, learn about the context. And thanks be to God, these scholars who spent years mm -hmm. digging and studying, they want to share that knowledge with us. And I think Brand, yes. Brand Petrie is fantastic. All the work he's doing. Yeah, yes. the work that he does in order to uh, 
share his knowledge with ordinary Catholics about the sacred scripture. Which one? Has he done the full commentary? Is it on the New Testament or the Old? He, he did on the Old, on the finished. Old. The new and one working now working on the New Testament. Yes. On the new Testament. Uh, so we are blessed. And it's, it's very sad, John, when you see Catholics who do not take advantage of it, you know, today. And the paradox, you well, know... I think we got to go back to our first slide. Yeah. You know the, and how it comes full circle. Exactly. You know the paradox today? The paradox, I think, of today is, is this. That if you go back, you know, a few decades, you know, to, to our grandfathers, grandmothers, when they didn't have access like we do today, but the Bible was alive at the home, remember? I mean, I grew up like that. Mm -hmm. The Bible stories... We knew who Adam and Eve was, you know, who jo Joseph was. In e All the stories were well, kind true. of... We were believe familiar or with don't that. believe, there's yeah. biblical literacy. And today, mm -hmm. even though we have all these things available to us, so many Catholics, unfortunately, and it's sad, they are biblically illiterate. Because they, if you don't take time... I have to tell you, if, if the only time as a Catholic, and that's for examination of conscience, you know... If the only time that you have contact with the Bible is Sunday liturgy, hopefully it's every Sunday, but that's absolute minimum and it's not enough. If the only time you have contact with the Word of God, because I think God is going to ask us at the last judgment, you know, just a few minutes once a week. I gave you my, I gave you my book, my Word, and you didn't even read it. Did you take time to read my love letter to you? Because mm -hmm. the Bible is the love letter to us of God, right? Well, I like where you commented, divine pedagogy, how God made his will manifest to us by meeting us where we were. Right. Through these uh, authors. You just brought, you know, divine pedagogy. What, what word did I use? I used the word uh, condescension. Yes. That God... not, in that, not in the sense of condescending, of talking down, per se. It's uh, from the Latin where you literally try to meet people where they are. Exactly. Every good teacher needs to do this. Otherwise, nothing is learned in the lesson. So the salvation history develops, right? And what God was doing so beautifully, it's like when you talk to a three-year-old, three right? You, you want to go down to the child's level. Yeah. Right? And you want to use simple words and teach, you know, and make a connection, right? Mm -hmm. and God acted the same way with humanity. I mean, he met people where they were and gradually was, like when he chose Abraham, gradually, step by step, I guess God is so patient with us, you know. I mean, the entire Old Testament is like God's patience revealed. Well, the gradual people. revelation of the, the covenants. The covenants. The, How it progresses. Mm -hmm. yeah. And God comes and, and teaches humanity century after century and and when everything was ready, the fullness of time, he sends his own son to show us his love, right? Oh, then that's the bad news. Earlier, folks, they had an excuse. Not everything had been revealed. <laughs> we, now we know. It's available. It's right there in uh, front of us. If in, we choose to in, grab it. In fact, you just quoted from the letter to the Romans when St. Paul said... Oh, uh, yeah, I, I did that on yeah. purpose. When Saint, when Saint Paul says, "Man, you are without excuse." So when when you are raising a teenager in the house, and it's so funny because the parent would tell the teenager, "You know, you have to do this." Remember, I'm telling you maybe fifty times, and then mm -hmm. he does something that he wasn't supposed to do, and usually the excuse is, "I didn't know." Yeah. I, you told me that, that you know, I, I didn't, he, I didn't know. And, and it doesn't work with the police officer yeah. either. Yeah, it doesn't Not work. Not that I would know myself, <laughs> <Yeah>. but. Uh... <laughs> I think that as Catholics, you know, it's going to be, of course, you know, God is merciful, but we have to take him seriously, you know, and like, I would not be able to say I didn't know. And a lot of Catholics would not be able to say, hey, I, I didn't know what you wanted, you know, because we do know. We, God has told us. You know, and we are so blessed because he did. There was a one uh, story in the gospel when Jesus says, whoever received more from that person, more will be demanded. Right? Yes. It actually was a gospel a couple of weeks ago. 
Uh, he was also yeah. in Spider-Man. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now as we close, we, we want to really be grateful to God and how blessed we are for having the Bible, the Word of God, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the Word of God is incarnate Word of God, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we as Catholics, this is a beautiful picture of our Eucharistic procession. Yeah, that's the Corpus Christi procession. Because the Bible, the Word of God is not dead. As the letter to the Hebrews says, and I quote, it is living and effective able to penetrate bone and marrows, our lives. You know, so the Word of God is living in the church, the presence of Christ, that when we come to worship Him on Sunday, we recognize the living presence of Christ in the community of the church. And, as another document says so powerfully, Sacrosanctum Concilium of the Second Vatican Council, whenever the words of the Gospels are proclaimed in the church, it is Christ himself teaching his people. So Jesus says, when we come to church, it is Christ himself teaching us his presence. Oh, Father, this is a great yeah. uh, point. It's a double incarnation. Exactly. The liturgy of the Word and the liturgy exactly. of the Eucharist. Because there are four modes of presence of Jesus in the Mass. The priest, the people, the Word of God, and the Holy Eucharist. Yeah. So it's great. Marvelous. Uh, can we conclude with a prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father Mariusz, for Thank joining you. us here in Studio 33 AD Catholic Media. Thank you. There will be more to come, because this guy is golden. We're going to get some more golden moments. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Studio 33 AD, Catholic Media. Many letters, right? Most of them were written... The first author of the New Testament. Yeah. Very important, because he's writing to Timothy, and I, and I think Timothy has a little crisis of, of uh, his holy word that we can study and... Uh, man. Man. But the scripture is the incarnation as well. It's the twofer. It's, you ready? A, oh, we don't... Okay, we, I thought we were talking already. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, no. Yeah. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> no, I think... We, we, well...